We just laid out Jim's checklist right there. Agree with all of it, any of it, disagree. Give us your take. Well, I agree with a lot of what uh, Kramer laid out there in his checklist. And when I look at this market from just a technical perspective, you know, Frank, I kind of think that the top, you know, uh, we have yet to see this top in the market top at this point in time. And when we go through and look at the technical indicators, I can lay out a case where we still have more room to go. And in, from our perspective, we're seeing this downtrend reversal on all the major averages at this point in time, whether it is the Dow, whether it is the S&P, uh, whether it is the Russell. We reverse the downtrend. Not surprised to see some backing and filling in here that Kramer's talking about, because that's what you typically see when you reverse a year-long downtrend, Frank. All right, so he was really keyed in there on, I think this is a softball for you, he's keyed on the technical indicators, saying they need to show a much more oversold market. Give us a sense of what you think would satisfy Kramer's requirements for this checklist, whether you agree or disagree. Yeah, well, I would agree that we do need to see this uh, uh, reset happen. And what I think you'll ultimately see happen is the market can pull back another maybe 5% or so. But what we need to see is really the on the S&P 500, the uptrend support line to remain intact off of those October lows and not to break the what was resistance at that downtrend resistance line comes in to be support. That is what you typically see from okay. a technical perspective. And you'll see the other momentum indicators get pretty well reset uh, just on that sort of pullback. All right, Craig, let's get to your thesis for 2023. In 2023, you see a hop, a drop, and a pop. Where are, where are we right now in this series of events you see for the markets? Well, Frank, I think we're still in the hop phase at this point in time. And I think the reset that Kramer talks about is just that, a shorter term reset. I think over the shorter term here, this market can move up toward the 42, 4300 range before you get a drop that comes into play. And what's going to cause the drop is a common question we've got from a lot of people. And I think that is when the Fed is finally stopped raising rates or uh, at that point in time, they've probably done a lot of the tightening that they need to do. You'll see the market probably come in. That is typically what we have seen in the past. You'll probably get a reset that will take you all the way down to maybe 3,800. And then after that, we'll probably hear that uh, from uh, that we're in a recession, okay. perhaps. And once you're in that recession, most of the damage is done. Then you get to pop, Frank. All right, before we let you go, Craig, we got to put you on the spot here. What's your price target for the S&P? What leads up to that? And can the Fed minutes coming out later today, can they change that price target or your thesis at all? I don't see the, any of the news coming out later today changing that thesis. We're looking for 46.25. We still think there's 16 percent upside from these levels. And we think that uh, the energy sector, we think industrials, we think financials will be some of the key drivers from it. And I would agree with Kramer that tech needs to take a break and we will see other parts of the market broaden out and push this market higher by year end.